Greetings and welcome to Temple Baptist Church in Poplar Bluff, Missouri. We continue to travel through the pages of the book of Proverbs. We're in chapter 3, and today we begin in verse 9 and look at verses 9 and 10 of Proverbs chapter 3. Listen to what the Word of God says. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. We just looked recently back up in verse 5 of Proverbs chapter 3 when we are charged with these words, trust the Lord with all your heart. One of the ways that we can trust the Lord is to trust Him with our possessions. Sometimes we think that we worked this, we did this, we had this great idea, and as a result of our wisdom, as a result of our doing what we did, we have all of these possessions that we own here on this earth. Actually, we would have nothing unless we had it from the Lord. The Bible says every good and perfect gift comes from the Father above. And so the Lord has given us that energy with which to work. The Lord has given us those particular jobs that we have. The Lord has given us the ability and we can just trace all of the good things that we have right back to God's grace and blessing over our lives. And so the Bible tells us to honor the Lord with your possessions. That is one of the, the biggest ways that we can trust God by trusting Him with all of our possessions. To come to the place when we have something, when we get something new, to be able to look at everything we have and say, Lord, all this you've given. Lord, we would not have had the wisdom, the knowledge, the ability, the health to do any of these things were it not for you giving us all of those things that made these things possible. And so, Lord, we just yield the fact, we, we understand the fact that these things are really yours, not ours. You're just loaning them for a time, for a season here on this earth. And so, Lord, these possessions, we want to honor you with our possessions. We want to tithe. We want to give offerings based upon what we have, based upon how you've blessed us. And so he says, And with the first fruits, honor the Lord with the first fruits of all your increase. The idea of first fruits, that can be kind of scary if, if you don't know to trust the Lord, if you haven't experienced trust in the Lord, if you're kind of iffy about, can I trust God really or not? The idea of first fruits is the very first things that you picked. Um, how do we know that the first things we've picked uh, are just going to be the first fruits of more to come? Maybe after we pick those first fruits, a storm would come by or a drought would happen or whatever takes place, and our crops would be ruined after that, and we've already yielded to God those first fruits. We've already tithed those. We've already given those as an offering. And the idea is we can trust God with our first fruits, understanding that God is going to bless us with more down the line. And so it is a matter of trust. Notice what he says there, the first fruits, not what's left over, not what you don't need after spending everything you want to spend on yourself, but give to God the very first, the priority. You see, it's not really trusting God if we give God the last, if we get, give God the leftover, if we give God and say, you know, I really can't give you this, what if this happens? We could what if ourselves to death. And do you realize that most of the things we say, what if this happens or that happens, most often those things never come to be. And so it's a lack of trust when we hold on until we don't need it anymore and then we give it to God. We give of the first fruits. We trust the Lord with all of our possessions. And notice what he says, literally, with all of our increase. Not just a portion of it, but we give the Lord the first fruits of all of our increase. I hear occasionally somebody will come to me and say, Pastor, do I tithe on the net or the gross? I'm going to be honest with you. I think we've lost the entire meaning when we have to ask that question. I think we're trying to limit. I, we we want to be legalistic a little bit about our tithes and offerings when we're asking that kind of question. And so we're to give the first fruits, not the leftovers, of all of our increase. It is a way to trust the Lord and His resources, which He desires to bless our lives with. And the result of that, 
In verse 10 it says, So your barns will be filled with plenty, and your vats will overflow with new wine. If you are faithful to God, I guarantee you, God will certainly be faithful to you. Trust the Lord. Trust in His faithfulness. That song says, Great is His faithfulness. And indeed it is. I'm reminded of some of the passages that I've been reading recently in the Scriptures and just my my own quiet time, my own personal time with the Lord. I've been reading about the prophet Elijah. I've been reading about the prophet Elisha. And in in numerous times in both of those prophets' lives, there were droughts, uh, there were famines, there were poor people of that day. And, And in one instance, Elijah, in the midst of a drought, the Lord said, go to this place and I will have the ravens. I will have the crows, I will have the blackbird, I will have them bring you food every day. And Elijah honored God, he obeyed God, and God was good to his promise to sustain Elijah. I remember one time when Elijah came across a widow, and he said, go in and make me a meal. And she said, well, really, I don't have enough. I was getting ready to go make a meal, and then I was going to die because I won't have anything else to eat. And he said, well, you go do as I've told you to do. And literally, the Bible says, through the miraculous power of God, the bin of flour was not used up and the jar of oil never emptied. God provided from His resources, according to His riches in heaven, the Lord provided for Elisha. The same thing with Elijah. The same thing with Elisha. There was a widow's oil and it was replenished miraculously. In the days of Elisha, he fed a hundred men with only twelve barley loaves. That's a reminder of Jesus feeding the four thousand and the five thousand with just a small portion of food. Jesus, the Lord, sharing with us and sustaining us through His resources. It's not about our resources. It's all about God's resources. And when we are faithful with the first fruits, trusting the Lord with our possessions, then the Lord will make sure that our barns are filled with plenty and our vats will overflow with new wine. Listen to what the Lord says in the psalmist. In Psalm chapter 37, verse 25, the psalmist says, I've been young and now am old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his descendants begging bread. God knows what we need, the Bible says, before we even ask him. But it's for us that we ask. It is an act of humility. It is an act of humbling ourselves before God, recognizing our dependence upon God. Lord, we can't provide this for our own lives. And so, Lord, here's our need. And then trusting the Lord and His resources to miraculously see us through all of life. Are you holding on to what you have? Are you being selfish? Are you thinking about yourself only? Or are you thinking about, Lord, I can trust you with all of my possessions. I wouldn't have it if it weren't for you. All good gifts come from the Father above, and we can trust Him. He wouldn't have given them to us if He did not trust us to use those things wisely in honoring Him and in helping others along life's way. He didn't give those things to us to hoard, but He gave those to us to help others along life's way. Would you trust God with your possessions? And would you trust God with His resources to miraculously meet our every need. Father, thank you that we can trust you. Thank you that you love us that much. And Father, I pray that you would help someone to exercise that faith, that trust today, to give you of the first fruits and to honor you, Lord, with yielding our possessions into your control. Move upon us, wow us with what you're able to do and show us how faithful you are to meet our every need. Encourage someone today with these words we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You have a great day in the Lord.